Hi, I'm Sarah, owner of Board Game Solutions. This is Lucy. I live in Newcastle with my husband Daniel and my job is making gaming accessories. This is the main product that I sell, it's on the dice bag. This came about about four years ago when my husband was after a dice bag. We had a look at what was available on the UK market quickly at the time and there wasn't really anything available that we could have then and there. But what I did have was a sewing machine. I used to sew in school, I learned from my grandma. So I went out and bought some fabric and I was able to put together a drawstring dice bag. So once I started to making the plain colour, the plain dice bags, I started looking at what other colour fabrics I could get out there. I just kind of wanted to have a wide range of all the colours if I was going to start selling them so people had a choice really because that was kind of what would drove us and initially was there wasn't much choice for what we were looking for. So I looked, started basically collecting every wide range of colour I could find to try and suit different games and different themes and that led, then led me on to looking at things like patterned bags and patterned fabrics. When I'm choosing a pattern, the kind of, there are sort of two things that I look for. First off, do I like the design? Because I'm only really the one making it and it has to be a nice pattern that I think will suit or work well on a bag. And the other thing was, does it make me think of a game? Now, when I saw this fabric, it instantly made me think of Sagrada. Don't know why, just saw that and thought, wow, that reminds me of playing that game. So this is the bag we use for Sagrada. Again, it's just, just a nice pattern bag, quite a simple design. Looks nice on the table when we're playing. So not long after I started selling the patented plain bags, I started getting requests for customization and a logo or a name to a bag. Not something I'd really looked into, so I started looking at what was available to do the process. That also kind of got me thinking, could this turn into a business rather than just a hobby? I've always had a dream of working for myself and running my own business. So could these, could the dice, could dice bags be the answer to that? I started looking at what kit was available in order to personalise a bag and embroidery seemed the a good place to start. The machine itself was fairly simple to learn, the software however was not. Something like this design may look quite simple but using the software to create this to be an embroidered pattern was quite a learning curve. Once I got that nailed down though I was able to start looking at some more complex designs, different colours, different patterns, some sort of like bit of, bit of individuality really in, in the bags. That's when I started offering people the customization. Some people just wanted a name on there. Some people just wanted to put the character name if they're doing a D&D session. And they really make good gifts as well. So quite, quite a few people would order it and say, oh, this is a gift for my DM. But it's got, it's got the character the name of the campaign, that sort of thing. And it was really rewarding working with the customers to see their ideas come to life from just a simple logo for their club, the, the character names that people come up with. It was just, it was such an interesting process seeing what people had available and wanted to, wanted to get their name out there. Once I'd got used to doing the embroidery, I did realise that I'd had some sort of limitations, especially when it comes to full colour patterns and prints. Embroidery is great for a single colour logo or for a, a, a very simple design, but when it comes to more complex stuff, it was really becoming harder to produce what people were looking for. Personally, I was also coming up to a point where I was quitting my day job to run the shop full time, so I felt it was time to invest in a fabric printer which let us do all over patterns when we're printing and full colour images on the bags. This allowed me to not only do some of my own designs I've been working on, but also work with some really talented designers and artists to bring their creations to life as well. It opened up the whole window of different themes of bags that we could produce for your happy campaigns, for sessions, for matching with games that are out there again. Same sort of rule applied to the fabrics when I was choosing my fabrics from the shop. Do I like the pattern? Do I like the image? Do I think it'll work well with a bag? And do I think it'll fit in the theme of a game? So having the fabric printer just opened that up to so much more options that we could that we could come up with for these bags. One of the reasons that I wanted to call the store Board Game Solutions is I wanted to come up with solutions to problems that me and my husband faced when playing games and hopefully other people will be having a similar issue. One of our main problems was rolling dice from falling off the table, having to chase the dog, stop the dog from grabbing the dice. So one of the things we looked at was dice trays. This is one of our first designs, a wooden frame dice tray with a clear printed inner. Nice and sturdy for rolling dice on contains them all, but it's a bit heavy, a bit cumbersome if you're going to be traveling. So we came up with some other options, a lightweight ball and a collapsible tray. 
Ideal for travelling for putting in your bag. The tray collapses with fresh studs. So if you need something to go flat to fit inside a game box or fit inside your book, your journal, that, that's kind of an option we came up for for that one. Or we've got the bowl again, a nice sort of simple shape, being able to roll dice on them fairly easily so that the dice still being contained in them. The good thing about this is, as well, is being able to use our fabric printer. It will enable us to do patterns, which we can do in all three designs if needed. We're also looking at things that will can suit the games like Blood Bowl, Mansions of Madness, something that matches your character alignment or your house alignment, or designs really that just caught my eye, patterns that I thought would work well on a dice tray. Again, being having the fabric printer, let's, let's just do the customization. We can literally put anything on, one, on some of these trays. Some of the customers I've done so far have been things for people's character art. They've actually had an image of the character that they want to put on the tray. People have had pets, I've had pets and children on quite a few dice trays that I've done. Again, it's a good gift for someone if you know they like, they like playing games, but you don't know what games they've got. You want to give them a game, a gift they can use, get them an image printed on a dice tray. It really is just the limit of imagination of what I can put on a dice tray. As I mentioned before, when I'm making these bags, I'm quite often thinking about games, not just how they can be utilised for things like D&D. When I look at our game collection, we've got quite a lot of games that we enjoy playing, and one of the things I instantly thought of was Eldritch for the monster tokens in Eldritch Horror. Now we would normally use a bowl to draw these out of and it kind of feeds the point of it being a blind draw if you can see into the bowl of the monster that you're pulling out. So I thought with the square base for the dice bag it would make a good monster draw bag. You can have a good rummage around, you don't have to look at what you're drawing, you can pull them out quite easily. Give them a good shake if you want to mix the monsters up a little bit. One of the other games I really enjoy playing is Carcassonne and we would quite often just put the tiles in a stack on a table when we were playing but then inevitably I'd knock the table and knock the stack over. So the idea of having them in a draw bag again that you can just rummage and draw out the tile you're playing for just made that, made that process a lot simpler for us when we were playing. Also stores them nicely, keeps them nice and tidy within the bag as well. This then led me to think about other games that use tokens. What other games could utilise a bag where you can draw tokens from or store tokens in neatly inside the box at the time? And that just kind of opened up all the other options that would come for with these bags. Now that I was running my shop full time, one of the things I really wanted to focus on was developing working with new products and new styles and new materials. In particular, I noticed there wasn't many shaped dice trays out there and that was something I was really keen to create. What we came up with was either an individual size or a table size trays. These trays are great for if you're playing a game of a shared set of dice or if you're playing wargaming, you've got a lot of room to be able to throw a lot of dice. Everyone has access to it, everyone can see what's going on. Again, I was able to utilise the customization option. As you can see, this is ours that we play with with our little shop logo on there. It just makes a great playing surface for something that you need a big, chunky dice tray for. On the other side of the scale, a small individual size dice tray with a shelf. I came up with this because I love playing Gans So Clever where you have to save a dice roll. So having something like this where you could roll and also save really made a difference to me playing games like that. You roll, you save what you want and then you re-roll without any danger of disturbing the ones that you've already got. Ideal for playing games like that. What I like about this again, we can do the customisation but we can also do it in tandem with these dice boxes. This is, um, so I had a customer ask me if we did an individual option just to store one set of dice. That's when we're sort of looking at the box option. One set of dice, I've got the matched felt to match the tray. The lid itself personalised with text and an image. And the great thing is, if you have two of them, it fits nicely inside the individual tray. I like this, I think it makes a really nice gift set. It's nice and compact, it can look really good on the shelf. Explain your dice and also be practical for use. Now this, this has to be my favourite game that we've played so far this year, Journeys in Middle Earth. I really wanted to make something for it, I've enjoyed playing it so much and obviously it doesn't really use dice, but I thought playing that's probably the next thing we could try and make. I love playing this game but I tend to get very involved and I kind of lose track of what I'm doing so being able to have spaces for things so I can see what I'm actually doing when I'm playing makes such a difference. Just being able to lay out what I'm doing, lay out what I'm going to prepare, reminding me to, to use my boons, that sort of thing. Just having a skill deck like this, a space like that there really makes a difference. Being able to keep track of my wounds, 
my fear, even inspiration. Just having a space to think just helps me focus when we're playing the game. And oh, we've had some really good, some really good levels in the campaign using these mats. I was able to customise the colours again, like we'll have done with some of the other stuff. So we've got elven beige and dwarven grey, as I call them here, because I play Legolas and my husband plays Gimli. This is definitely a range I'd love to expand on more in the future. I can think of so many games I enjoy playing that will benefit from just having some sort of structure like this. Help remind you of the rules, help keep you focused, just making making the game as immersive as possible. The mats themselves are made of thin rubber back neoprene, so they go in the box, which is the most important thing when you play up a game fit nicely in the box. One of the great things that my jobs allowed me to do is be able to make accessories for some of our favourite games. These token trays for Pandemic is an adaption on our current dice tray to be able to hold the cubes for Pandemic. Or we have another alternative on our, on our large dice trays which is a single token tray. This is an ideal size if you have to roll a single die and the good thing about it is it fits inside the dice bag for easy storage and clean up. We also use this as a coin tray. It makes a great little bank if you have to rummage around to get a particular token out. As well as having game specific items, I wanted to create something that was a bit more universal, could be used across a few of the games that we play. So I came up with this wooden component tray. It's got a recessed area for any tokens and it's got a slit across the top for cards. One of the things we use this for is Ticket to Ride. It's got the slots at the back to hold your tickets and it's also got the tray to hold your trains. I, I used to just leave my trains all over the table so having them organised in front of me makes planning a lot easier what I'm going to do. See all the routes that I'm going for, it just made things a lot easier from playing Ticket to Ride. I also use this for Catan. Again, you can hold your cards across the back, you can have your resources in front of you. It really helps with resource management and planning. The amount of times I've run out of roads Again, it's good to have them in front of you so you actually know what you're doing with them. Also use them for wingspan, alongside our nest bag that I made for the eggs. Again, you, this holds your missions that you're going for and you can keep your tokens in front so you can keep track of the food that you're trying to go for. This makes planning a lot easier. My favourite board game is wingspan. I just love the mechanics of it, I love the theming of it and I have a lot of fun playing it. When I was little, my favourite game was Scrabble. I loved reading, I loved wordplay, I loved doing crosswords. So when I discovered Scrabble, I was hooked. I used to play it with my granddad all the time. It was very tight matches. <laughs> it was ne never knew who was going to win. My favourite board game playing style would have to be co cooperative. We get incredibly competitive myself and my husband, so it's nice to work together and not have any, any tension in the room. My favourite game mechanic at the moment is Deck Builders. I just love collecting the cards. One of the first games we ever played was Dominion. I think that kind of got me, got me hooked on the whole deck building platform. The first game I ever bought was the original Pandemic. I've never heard, I've never played any game like it and it was such a strange mechanic but I just fell in love with the series. I've got so many Pandemic games now. Just love playing them all. The last game I bought was Quinto, a little roll and write game. It was recommended to me by our friendly local game store. And I have to say, I've just been powering through. I'm desperate to try and break 100. I've only managed the, the mid 70s so far though. Whenever me and my husband play board games, I'm always a green player. I even made myself a mug. It says so. Prior to running my Etsy store full time, I had 10 years working in the print industry and as a client manager. One of the main parts of my job was helping people get their projects published, whether it be a book, a leaflet, or in some instances, a full game for our friendly local gaming store. They had a game that was predominantly made of cards. One of the things I was able to do was advise on how to get the cards produced, the best card stock to use, and also the best way to have the box in the finished. Seeing the finished game on the shelf in the shop was just quite a surreal moment. That something that I printed and then made it to the fruition at the other end as a finished game. One of the great things about working in the print industry is I've gained a lot of skills and be able to produce my own stuff. I do all my printing here in my office in Newcastle. I'm able to print and finish all my own products. A lot of those skills I gained from working in the print industry and it's really nice to be able to put them to fruition and make my own products. Thank you for taking the time to look through my products and solutions that I have available. As I've said, I love making custom designs. I love working with people's images. So if there's anything you're interested in seeing, just drop me a line.